and I think we can proudly say that the support has been uh, enormous and continuous from the urban and suburban side. Our only problem that we wanted to concentrate at that time was in the remote village areas. So we were not very successful uh, to penetrate into the remote Malay areas in particular because uh, of the media alternative that we could not uh, challenge the existing one, you know, which is Utusan and, and, and the... And so we then revert to the, to, the, to the action of trying to maintain our status quo support from the remote Malay areas. So we made a point that if we can just sustain that 40% Malay uh, remote areas to support Pakata Rakyat, uh, then I think we are there. Whatever circumstances that happen, I think the support will be maintained. But unfortunately, over the last 11 months, Barasa National has been, has been doing a lot of um, uh, giving, um, giving, I think they have given a lot of um, items, so to speak, menggula-gula kan orang kampung, yeah? and uh, whatever offerings they have made in terms of um, uh, festive, festive season. Yeah? Uh, Barasa National have made a concerted effort to meet the remote Malay areas, by giving a lot of uh, goodies, so to speak. Okay? Now, as a result of that, uh, we face a slight drop in support from the remote Malay areas. I would say between 7 to 8%, yeah? compared to the 40% that we enjoyed pre previously. Now, so on that count, we actually double our effort in the Malay areas, so much so that Pakata Rakyat made a, 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 a a focused stand where the workers and the heads and the chief, the leaders of the AP, Kaanilan and PAS would concentrate in remote areas. Not so much in the suburban and urban areas because of that result that we got from, from the survey that we did. Yeah. So over the last 11 months, to answer Mr. Quack's question, that we have doubled our effort, focused in the remote Malay areas, just to make them realize that the power has been grabbed undemocratically and unconstitutionally as well as even from the Islamic standpoint it is against the Sharia okay which those were the points that we mentioned to the, to the Malay remote areas yeah it's against the Sharia it's unethical immoral and to a very large extent we say that it is forbidden it is a sin it is a sin for Brasa National to grab the power because it transcends and it goes against all bounds and all uh, boundaries. As far as the kampung folks per se, we were not very effective uh, because the propaganda issued by AMNO uh, works on, on two issues and those two issues were very much closely linked to the Malay uh, spirits their in, in internal spirit. One issue is that Pakata Rakyat Pera is giving face to the Chinese and become a stooge of the AP. That's the first issue, right? So it is lingering on a, on a Chinese issue, which is a highly racist anyway. The second issue is they have been playing around, Brasa National, that have resulted in us not being able to penetrate is because I, I played or I acted as if uh, I did treason, uh, treason to the palace, particularly the Sultan, which is very close at heart to the Malays. The Boneka issue, the Boneka issue and Durhaka. Uh, it, it's in English, you, thought, you call it what? Treason? Treason, yes. Treason, right. So in the hearts of the Malays, these two issues are so closely related to them that no sensible Malay, so to speak, as far as they're concerned, must ever involve in that, that two things. Okay? So it's more or less like a cardinal sin. Now, I have not been able to penetrate and to break that issue. But the only access that we did was to go through the, through the alternative media where we knew a great percentage of those kampong folks, they had sons and daughters who were studying 
passing away, either in uh, the institutional of high, uh, higher learning, in the private as well as the public. That when we made an effort to approach all these sons and daughters, hopefully within this one year, or last one year, when they approached their parents way back in uh, remote areas, they were able to convince to a certain extent their parents. So we, we, we played that, that move. And um, we got some, uh, some edge out of it. We, we managed to get some support, but not very much. And it's not considerable. But those were the only alternatives which is available, apart from uh, going to remote areas, giving trauma and small scale trauma. You know, small scale trauma. Secondly, our efforts to, in order to diffuse Barisan's national propaganda is to go to the mosques and surahs. Uh, because those are the only premises where many Malay folks would go at least once a week. Uh, and apart from that, we, we send flyers. But as you know, Kampo Malay folks are quite difficult in reading, yes. you know. So we had a problem, even if we send good flyers, I think they, they did not give any tremendous result. Primarily because they, 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 they would like to be more or less having this contented feeling, so to speak. Um, one of the reasons uh, because of that, you know, they, they don't see so much in terms of supporting Pakatan Rakyat, but deep in their minds they were saying, okay, life has to go on, business must go on. But they say, we will not forget the 13th general election. So much so that the terms told to me by a lot of folks, whether they are kampung, urban, suburban, or irrespective of races, they say, Dato' Sri, uh, kita tunggu pilihan raya 13. You wait and see. Yeah? Kita tidak ada lupa. So meaning that even you can see that they feel contented, but I think deep in their heart, they will say, we'll teach them a lesson come 13th election. That's one issue. Second issue is that, why you feel there is this uh, deterioration in support to Pakatan Rakyat? Because AMNO has been playing this, um, uh, this frightening and inciting fear, inciting fear. Over the last nine, eight months, they incited fear. And uh, that fear is still very much based on racist sentiments. Uh, number one, it says that if you still allow Pakatan Rakyat to maintain, uh, to administer PERA, then you will see a Chinese government. Because why? Because majority of them are Chinese. Right. That is their, their argument. And they actually overplayed that issue over the last uh, 10 months, and they repeated that, repeated that in the Malay papers. So if you scan and analyze to some Malay Berita Harian over the last eight months, I think without any uh, doubt, every day they were playing those issues. Right. So to a large extent, there seemed to be deterioration. Okay? But I have the, the, the confidence level that through our actions of uh, imbibing information, disseminating, uh, it will more or less uh, diffuse those things as well. Okay? We managed to saturate, to saturate uh, the propaganda played by AMNO. Uh, that's the reason why uh, over the last 11 months, uh, PAS in particular got the upper hand support by gen general Malaysians and in particular Pakatan Rakyat, because we were able to get ourselves out of the trappings of UMNO. Yeah? Number one, the trappings of UMNO was the unity government, where you saw there was some misunderstanding within Pakatan Rakyat, uh, and that was actually a mileage for UMNO. But then PAS uh, made a stance in our uh, convention that we say no and no, no. So then the support came back. Secondly, then they they played the issue of uh, of Kalimah Allah, you know, which is very very recent now. But thanks God, uh, Pas was able to transcend that racist uh, racist elements, and uh, we almost immediately made uh, a statement, an official statement that no. We're not going to be with Amno, even though Amno used an issue of um, of Malay and Islam, but that was totally an abuse of uh, of uh, by Amno. So we made a, a statement that was uh, overjoyously accepted by 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 the Malaysians, in particular as well as uh, in Pakatan Rakyat in general.